can. We're going to be talking with Mads Brueger. He's the director of the film The Ambassador. What an interesting film this is. So I'm excited to get to talk to you. Thank you. I don't know that I've I've really ever seen a film that has this premise where you're in the film, the lead of the film, yes, being someone else, a diplomat in Africa, and filming all undercover. I mean, it's such an interesting story on how on how you pulled this off and how you thought of this idea and thought you could pull it off. I think it's it's fascinating. So kind of tell audiences about what this film documents. It's, yes. Um, to keep it short. To keep it short, um, yeah. It's complicated. It is a bit complicated. Well, back in 2007, I discovered that uh, you can actually buy a diplomatic title through mm -hmm. these diplomatic title brokerages, which are present on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, so for if you sell out of, a lot of money, you can become the trade attaché for Vanuatu, for instance. Mm -hmm. It's typically third world countries selling these diplomatic titles to typically, you know, um, eccentric white men. Uh, and I thought, if this is really possible, that could be an amazing starting point for a documentary. Mm -hmm. Because if I became a diplomat, I would get access to a very closed world in a typical uh, failed African state where I could meet all the kingpins, all the players you usually don't get to meet in the generic Africa documentary. The ministers, the diplomats, the expat businessmen and so on. Mm -hmm. And it would also bring me beyond role playing because instead of you know playing a diplomat, I would actually be one. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning. That's a very interesting start. W your goal from the start on this film was to expose, uh, I'm, I'm questioning, was it to expose this kind of illegal, or is it legal activity, or is it to kind of understand it, or is it to understand the culture that allows this to happen? What was your goal when you, when you started? Well, you know, regarding illegal illegalities, mm -hmm. it, it is a, a borderline business. Mm -hmm. um, but my uh, my ambition was, you know, to gain access to this, you know, the closed world of diplomacy, mm -hmm. and through this, you know, expose uh, corruption. First mm -hmm. of all, moral corruption, mm -hmm. uh, the systemic exploitation of an African state uh, through, you know, former colonial powers. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, you know, it has also to do with my my own childhood fantasies about Africa. Okay. Uh, I, I read a lot of comic books when I was a boy. Uh -huh. uh, Tintin, The Phantom, uh, Bernhard Prince. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued with, you know, Africa as it was in the 60s and 70s. And that Africa is to be found where I shot the film. Oh, okay. In this country called the Central African Republic, mm -hmm. one of the most, you know, forgotten uh, African states, no, no, nobody basically knows about this this place, uh, and it and it, it is like a Jurassic Park if you long for Africa of you know that time and period of Mobutu, Bokassa, and mm -hmm. Idi Amin. Mm -hmm. I also have this fascination with diplomacy because I've read a lot of you know Graham Greene novels and so on, um, and I thought you know if I could bring all this together in mm -hmm. one film through becoming a diplomat, yeah. I could do something interesting. That's some grand ambition there. Very much yeah, so. It yeah. sounds almost megalomanical. Yeah. Well, and it in a film set up like this, where you're going to go and, and pose and, and purchase you know, yourself as a diplomat, so you can, you can purchase the rights as a diplomat, you really don't know how the story is going to unfold at all. So you were really just letting the story unfold as you went, because there's no way to plan what's going to happen there. Exactly. It's a let's see what happens project. Yeah. Apart from the fact that, you know, in the film I'm dressing very flamboyantly. Mm -hmm. I wear, you know, riding boots, uh, tailor-made uh, business suit attires. And, you know, because in a place such as the Central African Republic, the only thing which is suspicious is trying to blend in. Mm. But, but if you do the opposite, you know, by becoming very visible, mm -hmm. People would think, you know, if, if he is acting and looking like that, he has to be very powerful, very rich, probably also very naive and foolish, mm -hmm. but that's okay. We will not, you know, kill him. Mm -hmm. And by looking like I do in the film, I'm also attracting really interesting characters who are almost like, you know, comic book characters. Unbelievable. It's such an interesting story. Let's take a quick look at the film. Do you know what we're going to see in this clip? 
Have Actually, you... I don't. Okay, well then we'll take Just... a look at it and then you can tell us when we come yes. back. So take a quick look at the film, The Ambassador. Well, that was a look at actually the trailer of the film, The Ambassador, and Mads Brugger is here to tell us about the film, and that was you in the film. Yes. I, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm just like, this is crazy. How did you know what you were doing in that situation? I mean, how did you pull it off? It was a matter of rolling with the blows. Um, just as they came? Yes. Because there's no way to prepare for this, right? No, because in a, in a place such as the Central African Republic, there is no reality principle, basically. Mm -hmm. There is no uh, causality that if you do this, then this will happen. Yeah. Uh, so you just have to, you know, go along with mm -hmm. whatever comes at right. you. Well, and obviously, you know, in, in doing, in seeing that, you sense the irony in that you're telling the truth of the situation and creating essentially a lie about it, right? Because you're there posing as a, a diplomat but making a film about it. So it's, it's an interesting way to go about it where you have to sink yourself into the culture in order to get the footage, but at the same time, you're not presenting yourself as a filmmaker up front. So yes. how, how did you reconcile that in, in your mind when making the film? Well, that is, you know, a very schizophrenic situation <laughs> yeah. to be in because, you know, on, on, on the one hand, you know, I had actually paid a lot of money to become a diplomat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I was just not only posing as one. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, nobody knew I was making a film about it, so, you right. know, it was uh, a bit difficult to keep it, you know, balanced inside, right. yeah. And and I know that there were situations, did you ever have a moment where, you know, you felt like this this may not be worth it? Because I know in, in a part of the film, you went into, you know, meeting with the locals, and, and they're so, I think that, that part of the film is, is beautifully told about this, about this village that, you know, they're constantly told by these diplomats. There's hope coming, or there's jobs for you, or yes. there's things that are going to happen for you. Yes. And, and you had to do the same, because that's what they expected, and that's how you could fit into this role. So how was that personally in, in, in kind of, you know, doing the same thing that you're trying to expose and creating hope, and then it's not really happening? Yes. That is what is, you know, difficult to, um, to go about uh, doing, because it, it fairly quickly becomes mm -hmm. s cynical. You right. Know. Can you break eggs to make omelettes? Right. Um, in the film, I am I'm starting up a match factory, mm -hmm. knowing quite well that this match uh, factory will never come into existence. Mm -hmm. Partly because, you know, I, I'm not able to run a match factory in the Central African Republic, mm -hmm. but also because um, in Cameroon, next to the Central African Republic, is a company called Le Boxeur, mm -hmm. owned and operated by a French diplomat, mm -hmm. and that company exports all the matches being used in the Central African Republic. Um, and I was told, you know, that if I were to start up a mess factory there, he mm -hmm. would, you know, harass me or basically mm -hmm. try to stop me. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to tell this story. Right. But, you know, at the same time, I am giving, you know, these uh, pygmies, these mm -hmm. locals, a, a false sense of hope. Yeah. So it's, you know, morally difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So now that the film is complete and people are screening it, what are, what's your hope? What's, what's the takeaway for audiences? First of all, I'm very interested in, in what will happen when the film comes to Africa, mm. because Africans never get to see what their, what the, their kingpins, what their uh, people of power really are doing, mm -hmm. how they are wheeling and dealing. Mm -hmm. So I think this film could be like a landmark experience for, uh, for many Africans. Um, I also hope it will, you know, kindle a discussion about how, you know, uh, former colonial powers are treating they have, you know, former colonial states. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, you know, there's also room for debate about, you know, what, what China is doing in Africa. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully a lot of discussion. Yeah, there's a very complicated situation and a complicated film to make because that was unbelievable that you, you were able to pull that off. It's it's very intriguing film. Thank you. Um, so thank you for coming in and, and talking about it and giving us a little bit more insight into the process. And um, you can see the film. It's actually screening today at 1 o'clock and also tomorrow, correct? I think okay. actually 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock? Well, yeah. check your film guides to yeah, make sure you don't guide. miss it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll be back. We're going to be talking with California Solo, the director of that film, right after this. Thank you. Thank you.